Welcome to Spirit Chat Radio with your host, Jennifer O'Neill, where the focus is to simplify the process of using the spiritual tools and gifts you were born with in a way that fits into your everyday life. Jennifer is a leading expert in the field of spirit communication and has spent the last 20 years as a professional psychic and spiritual teacher, helping people all over the world learn how to develop themselves spiritually through her books, podcasts, and her virtual learning center, Keys to the Spirit World. For the next hour, join Jennifer to discover different tools and techniques that will help you learn how to navigate the spirit world better and empower you on your own spiritual journey. Aloha, everybody, and welcome to Spirit Chat Radio. For those who have followed me over, then you know a lot of what Spirit Chat Radio is about. For those of you who are new and discovering Spirit Chat Radio for the first time, this is a radio show that I've put together. I've been doing radio for probably roughly about eight years. I've been teaching for a lot longer than that. But I noticed over the years as I was teaching, and even when I was younger, which I'll get into in a little bit here, is there was the reason I started doing radio is because there was a lot of information out there when it comes to spiritual spirit stuff spiritual alignment spiritual senses and i noticed there's a lot of inaccurate information as well as some good information and so i started getting a lot of emails of people asking me questions and i thought well what better way to put it together than in a podcast and i started doing that when i would get emails and i would answer questions through podcasts so feel free to email me if you have a podcast subject you'd like me to um do a show on and it became really successful and people really enjoyed the information and so for those of you who have not followed me before you can find more of my spirit chat podcasts on iTunes if you just do uh, Google Jennifer and spirit chat on iTunes Jennifer O'Neill you'll find them but today on today's show we are going to talk about a subject that I get asked about often and I'm sure that you've been you've heard about often people are constantly wondering what is this empath thing you know how do I know if I'm an empath and so today's show is are you an empath and to, before that I get into I actually have a lot of good information for you guys if you've ever wondered if you were an empath if you've ever wondered what does an empath mean <clears throat> we're gonna cover all of these things today um, so I'm gonna start with some of the basics if if you're wondering if you're an empath and basically what is an empath if you some people know what it means and some people think they know what it means but they're not quite sure so we're just going to cover all the basis on this so an empath is a spiritual sense or a spiritual gift that you have so for instance you have a spiritual body and you have a physical body the physical body works with the physical energy and physical senses everybody knows what that is you know touch feel um, sight scent, smell all of that but a lot of people don't think about it in this way you actually have a spiritual body which works with universal energy and your spiritual senses so most people learn about their physical bodies but very little people very little information is out there of what makes up your spiritual self and your soul basically the essence of who you are and that is in your spiritual body so you have the physical body and the spiritual body which is made of energy both are equally important both are equally important to work together you you need them we were built very particular in that way to utilize both of our bodies um, however many people train themselves only to use roughly 40 to 60 percent of their makeup and who they are their abilities it's kind of like you have you ever heard you know where people say oh you only use 10 percent of your brain or 15 percent of your brain and then everybody's like yeah what would happen if I use like 90 percent of my brain or 70 percent of my brain they get all excited about all these really cool things they can do it's the same sore concept a lot of people are taught their physical bodies and their abilities and they're not aware of their spiritual bodies and their abilities and therefore instead of working together they mostly use utilize the physical part of themselves and they find that or I find that they're basically using 40 to 60 percent of the makeup of, of 
all this cool stuff that you can do when you're using your spiritual body. Um, how did I even get involved in this and, and interested in teaching it is kind of interesting and I feel like pertains to this because when I was younger, I've always been a psychic. It's not something that, you know, I was struck by lightning or, you know, I don't know, hit my head on a cabinet or something and all of a sudden became psychic. It was something that I have had my entire life. So I grew up just be having this natural ability to be able to see energies and work with them and kind of just have a, have a psychic ability about all different kinds of things. The interesting thing is if you think about when you're like two years old or, you know, four or whatever, I didn't know I was different than other people. So here's what I find interesting when we're working with your, your spiritual body or your physical body. A lot of people around me as I got older and could more comprehend things, you know, eight, nine, whatever, I would notice that when I'd say we shouldn't do something or we should do something, people would, I could tell and I could psychically feel they weren't tuning into their spiritual bodies, accessing all the, the information that would be helpful to them. And so they'd be like, well, why do you think we should do this? Or why do you think we should do that? And what I found interesting as a young, young person was I knew people around me all had the same abilities that I had, the same kind of abilities to tune into the spiritual realm and universal energy. I just was very puzzled because I could also see that they were very, um, not tuned in and they did almost blind to it. They didn't understand that they had these abilities that they could work with. So as I got older, I found this very curious that there was a lot of people around me, pretty much everybody I came in contact with, I could feel that they had a lot of the same abilities, but they really kind of ignored them and they weren't a part of their life. And that sort of led me to my obsession about teaching everybody about their spiritual abilities and how it really you have them and how it integrates into your life on a daily basis, whether you notice it or you don't notice it, you're mostly working with it. So everyone has the natural ability to work with their spiritual senses. Why? Because you exist. Um, that is part of your existence. So you have this natural ability to work with them. You're born with a gift and ability. It's meant to be utilized. It's meant to be work, you know, work, work with you in your everyday life. Um, it's interesting also as we um, go back in history, it's utilized a lot, spirituality, spiritual senses, um, using the spiritual part of yourself, working with universal energy, working with planet energy, all of that was very normal. And then we worked ourselves out of it where it became something that you weren't supposed to be doing. And now people are starting to get back into it. So, so it's always been around. It's just was it, whether it was recognized or not. I kind of find that interesting. But the degrees that everybody have it will be different. So I've had people say, well, okay, that's cool, but why am I not like you? You know, I don't believe you because I don't do what you do. Well, there's a couple different reasons. One is everybody's gifts will vary. Um, people will have different types of gifts. They will, or spiritual senses, empath stuff being one of them. And I'm not going to lose you here because we're actually going to get into the six signs of how you can tell if you're an empath. <clears throat> but you, you sort of, to really understand how the empath senses work, you really need to have a background of your spiritual senses at all. So your degrees will vary. Some people, it, I always explain it like, you know how, you can, everybody can play sports, but not everybody's meant to be a professional baseball player. It's kind of along those lines. And it depends on how much you acknowledge your gifts, how much you pay attention, and how much you develop them because you have to train to develop gifts or become aware of them just like you needed to practice you know, feeding yourself or walking and talking when you were little, when you were young. <clears throat> so why do people not utilize these senses? If everybody's born with them, why are they not utilizing them? because they have to learn to access them. And when you, you really need to learn how to become, or they think, sorry, they think that they have to learn to access them. The truth is you really have to learn to become aware of them. There's a difference. So you can learn how to harness them better, but the access part, it's like, I swear people think that they have some secret key or code to get into these psychic senses and they have to know what it is and it's very difficult to decode. 
it's there you're working with it you just need to learn to become aware of it now that's a trick though learning to become aware of it and learning that's a whole different thing and it's it's also um, something that you would have to commit to is becoming more aware because a lot of things that you might think is not your spiritual senses probably is and vice versa and you need to learn to separate that from your physical body because most people think everything's their physical senses or they don't have the proper knowledge they're just not taught much about universal energy and how it works so um, people grow up believing you know it's it's these things are not really real you know your spiritual senses or psychic abilities and it, that's kind of interesting because your spiritual senses and your energy that's not metaphysical it's actually a scientific fact um, they can prove how energy is you know you, you've heard about atoms and that sort of thing and how energy moves that's all scientifically done or proven so we'll touch base really quickly if we have time before break on some of the spiritual senses that you've heard of I'm sure you've heard of the clairs and the reason I want to talk about the clairs is because sometimes people say okay I've heard of the clairs but where does um, being an empath like where does it fit into this whole psychic family um, well the being an empath an empath is clairsentience it's actually a clair so you've heard of I'm sure clairvoyance which is you can uh, see things you know clear seeing is what it's supposed to be called clear audience people who can hear things um, and there's some other clairs that we're gonna go over as well we'll we'll pick up with that right after the break here and then we'll get into six signs that you can tell if you're an empath The cutting edge of Conscious Radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Om Times Experts program. With Om Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ometimes.com. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more, all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. I am Fidel Nshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family. And then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they recirculate to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Okay, so we're back. We're going to start with the Claire's again that we just started covering. Um, and the reason, just for all you wondering, uh, we're wondering if I'm an empath and why are we covering all this stuff? Because th this is one thing, this is one of the ways that I like to teach is because it's not necessarily just helpful for you to find out if you're an empath or not. You should really understand a little bit of background on what a spiritual or psychic sense is, why you have it. Um, to help solidify the reason that you have it so that you have a better understanding because in order to acknowledge and to work with any of your psychic senses the more knowledge that you have is is better the it's really important for you to understand the background and when I teach my students I teach a lot of students I have some classes um, in my I have a class that's going to getting ready to open up actually uh, psychicabilityclass.com you can go to if you're interested if you catch this before enrollment on Monday you can 
Um, Monday we open enrollment. If you don't get there till later when open enrollment is closed, you can definitely get on the wait list. But with the students that I teach, um, that's one of the things that they love about how I teach is that they get enough information to understand more about their senses. If you understand more about your senses, the awareness is easier, the working with it's easier. So that's why I do a lot of this background stuff. We won't do this on every show, but I feel like that this is an important part of this show. Um, so we talked about uh, an empath being part of your clairs because people get very confused on that. They don't even think it fits into the family. Everybody hears about the clairvoyance, like I said, the clear seeing, the clear audience, and that's pretty much as far as they go. <laughs> they forget about some of the other clairs, which is then we have clairgustance, which is um, knowing, just knowing something's gonna happen or just having a knowing or a sense of um, something that is going to happen or has happened. Then we have uh, clear tangent, which is clear touching. Um, that's if you hold an object and you can read an object that way. You have, we have clear, clear scent, which is if you can smell, you can smell spirit. Spirits usually can leave a scent and that's how you do a reading of some sort or that's how you connect in with spirit. Clear gustance, which is clear tasting. That one's really fun and weird, um, I must say. And you can, uh, spirits will connect with you when it comes to tasting. You can actually taste things. It's usually things such as um, cigar smoke or um, whiskey or something, coffee, something very uh, noticeable um, if you have clairgustance, which is kind of rare. But clairsentience, that's what being an empath is. So before we get into the six signs you're an empath, um, you need to know what it is. And that means you can read energy. That's what being an empath is. It is quite possibly the most underestimated psychic gift. And, and what I find the most interesting is it's becoming quickly the most um, popular, and by popular I mean the most found gift. So when I was a young psychic, um, there wasn't very many empaths. I was an empath. I was a very strong empath and it kind of weirded me out that I never ran into anybody else that had these empathic type abilities. About the last couple of years, um, I've run into more empaths, probably I'd say the last five years, definitely the last two years, I've run into more people that have developed an empathic ability than I've ever have my entire 40 some years of being on this planet. It's, it's amazing. The, um, this ability has heightened to a crazy level and I will get into that towards the end of the show of why that that is. But if you're an empath, you basically read energy. Um, you can read energy of people, places, animals, spirits, things. You feel energy and, and some people, they explain it or are under the impression that being an empath means that you just feel other people's emotions. And that is true, but it's not what entirely being an empath is. You can feel and read other people's emotions, but you also read energy of coming from everywhere. So you're kind of like a radio tuned in to all this different energetic movement around you from people, places, or things. That's what can be so overwhelming with being an empath. So empaths are basically energy readers. And as an energy reader, here's an interesting little tidbit, is when you tune into universal energy, you can actually read past, present, and future things, which a lot of people don't realize when they're an empath. So we'll start with the six signs that you're an empath and we'll get through as many as we can before the next break here. So I wanna cover, I'm gonna cover six of the common signs. Do you ever feel overwhelmed when going into a place filled with a lot of people? Very common sign you're an empath. <clears throat> Do you feel overwhelmed if you're going to a mall, a sporting event, Walmart? Walmart tends to be a biggie with empaths. Um, somewhere where there might be a lot of people um, and sometimes it, it'll even be a struggle with an empath. You'll want to go, but when you get there, you feel anxious and unsettled, unsettled, or you feel very off, but you don't know why. Um, so going into 
a place and feeling overwhelmed. Now, it doesn't always have to be a crowded or a public place. You know, it could be like a house party, um, could be a baby, baby shower, wedding, Thanksgiving dinner, anywhere where you're around a lot of people. Um, the reason for that is, like I said, you're just like a radio picking up all kinds of emotional s signs from everywhere or just energetic signs from signals from everywhere. And when you don't realize that you're an empath, if you go into a place with um, a lot of people, those people tend to be very intense. People tend to be very intense when they are giving off an energetic vibe. And so you're going into an intense vibe situation where there's all these different energies that you're tuning into at one time. So it can be very overwhelming. You're getting something very um, calm over here and then over here you're getting more of a, a high, um, high energy and over here you're getting more of like an angry type energy over here you're getting kind of an anxious energy and you're you're consuming them all in at one time because you're reading all this energy and that's why you feel overwhelmed going to a place filled with a lot of people the interesting thing about that is usually what kind of messes with people is your own thoughts are not going along with how you're feeling so for instance you're not feeling upset or anxious or whatever but your body's reacting that's because your spiritual body is reading all this energy your physical brain is not matching so a lot of times you will notice that you're feeling a way that you're like why am i feeling this way this this isn't making sense to me because i i don't feel like i should be overwhelmed or fearful or anxious or i don't feel like i should be edgy nothing that i can think of you know led to me feeling this way and but yet this is how i'm feeling and so like I said, your spiritual body is reacting it, 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 by the reading. It goes into your physical body. Your physical body then reacts and your, your mind is a little behind going, wait a minute, what's up? So sign number one, do you feel overwhelmed when going into a place filled with a lot of people? Sign number two. Now this, some people have, some people don't have, but it's a pretty clear sign. Uh, can you always tell when someone is lying to you? So have you always been able to tell when someone is telling the truth or lying to you, even if they do it flawlessly or, you know, they're really good at it, or maybe it's just a little white lie, but you can tell that something's off or something's not quite right about what you're hearing. Something in your chest area feels a little bit off to you. Um, it doesn't mean that you can go, yep, they're lying right away. Yep, that's it. But something just feels not right about what they're saying. That's another um, clear sign that you're an empath, is you can tell something's not matching with what's coming out their mouth. And that is because, again, you're reading their intentions, you're reading the energy about what they're putting out, but they're saying something different and it doesn't match. So in that chest area, you will get that feeling that something's off, something's not quite matching. Um, number three, do you have random emotions or mood swings, especially when in someone else's presence or when you think about them, which make no sense to you? So that's pretty clear, but how I talk to people about this or how, because then they'll go, well, how do I know if it's not my emotions? How do I know if it's their emotions? So for instance, if you think about somebody or if you're in someone's presence and you start feeling like you're on an emotional roller coaster, let's just say that you had a really good day um, and then something happens where you think about somebody or you're with somebody and you didn't necessarily have a bad exchange, but you start feeling very edgy or very cranky or vice versa. You are very cranky and you're around somebody and then all of a sudden you're feeling very uplifted and happy. There's all these different things that can happen with, a, with the mood swings that are not making sense to you. And how I explain that to people is if it makes sense and it is actually your emotional, um, uh, your emotions in your own physical body, not something you're picking up from somebody else, is there should be a train of thoughts. So for instance, you should be able to track your emotion. You should be able to go back and go, okay, well, this person pulled out in front of me, made me mad. I stopped at the grocery store. That made me madder because they were out of whatever. Then it took really long time to get in the line, and now I'm in my car and very exhausted and irritated. 
Okay, that's a train of thoughts. Or um, somebody came up to you at work and said you looked really good today. Uh, your boss came and told you you did a really great job on something and then you find out that you're getting a raise and you go home and you're feeling really excited. That is a train of thoughts. You can pinpoint where that thought or mood came from. That's really, really important on the mood swings. However, if you were having a great day, you walk in the door and all of a sudden you're very edgy, you haven't even talked to anybody or you thought about somebody or you talked to somebody who wasn't rude to you, who, who you didn't have an exchange with that, that should have caused you to be upset or angry or feeling edgy, but all of a sudden you just find that you're irritated or you just walk into a place. Um, it, that happens to me often. Um, I can walk into a restaurant or um, any type of place to buy something and immediately I will immediately have a feeling of either feeling edgy irritated or just very calm and zen and really enjoy the space you know what I'm saying and so it, if you have these shifts in your moods without having a thought behind it that leads to this shift in your mood swing that is a very cl clear um, indication so that you're an empath it kind of makes no sense to you this is when your physical body is not re it, it will react to your, your spiritual body but they're not quite matching so the another one that's very common uh, not everybody gets it but some people do um, can you feel someone else's physical ailments do you ever feel sick or experience pain which makes no sense to you at all only to find out that a friend or family member was experiencing something so um, I, my daughter one time had a, a toothache and um, we later found out that her dad had a cavity. She never had one. So we will get picked up on um, number five of your signs right as soon as we return from this little break here. Thank you. a more conscious lifestyle to your world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free ascendinghearts.com Hello, I'm Lisa Berry. Join me every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for Light on Living. A chance to see new, hear different, and feel more as I shine the spotlight on all the ways to lighten the load of life's challenges. Light on Living is your link to that new way you're looking for, that new understanding that will enhance your life, and that positive connection that will support your growth. So join me and you'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're not wired to have a response to this sound. You're neutral to it. And you can hear it repeatedly without feeling anything. But when we introduce a new stimulus, save the food, we've achieved pulling a natural or inborn response from you. Save the food, because 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. Save the food, cook it, store it, share it. Just don't waste it. For tips and recipes, visit savethefood.com. Brought to you by NRDC and the Ad Council. All right, welcome back to Spirit Chat Radio. So we've been covering the six signs of if you're an empath. Number one is, well, I'm just going to recap them real quick. If you feel overwhelmed, going to a place filled with a lot of people. Number two. Can you always tell when someone is lying to you? Remember, that's not necessarily, you know, like, I'm, I know you're lying. Not like that necessarily, but you can tell that something's off when they're, someone's telling you something. Number three, having random emotions or mood swings, especially when someone else is in someone else's presence or when you think about them or if you walk into a place that make no sense to you. Um, so we just got finished with that one and we were just talking about can you feel someone else's physical ailments um, and like I said the my daughter had a toothache my my um, Husband had a cavity. It was very strange. She got his cavity fixed. My daughter was fine <laughs> 
So, um, and another common thing is, uh, I will have clients or people, um, or even happens in our family where maybe someone will have a side ache, you know, they'll find out someone had, um, kidney stone or you know someone's feeling nauseous then another person had the flu it doesn't necessarily need to be something major it could be um, you know even a headache or something like that so um, can you feel someone else's physical ailments that would be number four uh, number five is do you instinctively know what someone needs to feel better emotionally or physically so can you predict or instinctively know what they need people need to feel better um, sometimes and a lot of times people can do this who are in pass even when the person doesn't quite know what they need themselves and so this is kind of interesting um, I'll get into this a little bit more but uh, people uh, will be drawn to impasse to tell them things like it's not necessarily um, you have to be a healer of somewhat it may be you're the go-to person in the family and everybody comes to you for advice that would be a sign of being an empath because a lot of times if you're the go-to person they leave feeling a little bit better you know um, I, there was a short time when I was younger that I worked in a dentist office I was a dental assistant and everybody who came in used to tell me that just blurred out their entire life story and I would have other assistants be like, wow, they just literally tell you everything. And I mean, they would tell me everything. It was the craziest thing. It was stuff you would think, I'm not really sure you should probably tell people this at your dentist office, but you know, whatever, they left feeling better. So if you instinctively know how to make someone feel better, maybe you're that friend. Maybe you're the friend that uh, knows exactly what to say to your other friends. Maybe you're the go-to friend, maybe, you are the healer you might be the person who knows that they need more sleep or you might be the person who knows that their diet is off you know what I'm saying but if you instinctively it's not that you have to do it for professionally but you just seem to be the go-to person number six is do you feel emotionally or physically drained after being around an individual a group of people to the point of not feeling physically well this is a huge huge indicator of being an empath um, I think that people over overlook this way more often than they should so for instance if you're around an individual or a group of people do you ever find yourself feeling any of these things do you ever find yourself feeling shaky lightheaded weak nauseous anxious out of body or kind of like a low blood sugar feeling like when you're full so when you should not be experiencing a low blood sugar feeling um, not having these feelings prior to but only after being around people do you ever find that you're just feeling drained um, a lot of people use that word they just feel drained they feel like they need to take a nap they feel they feel shaky they feel lightheaded that is a super clear indication of being an empath um, it usually takes a couple hours to feel normal again after you experience some of these things being around an individual or a group of people but like I said this is a very clear indicate indicator that you're an empath uh, why does that happen when you're around um, people or a group of people because I like to use the energizer bunny kind of example for this because everybody is made up of energy and when you're an empath a lot of times people will draw energy from you because they tend to feel better when they're around empaths and people who cannot keep their battery high they cannot keep their energy high themselves they will draw upon other people so imagine it like a battery being recharged constantly imagine it like your your iPhone keeps draining and draining and draining and you have to recharge so every house that you go to and every place you're plugging in your iPhone to try to keep it charged that's what happens with regular people who cannot hold their energetic vibration high enough and so they will continuously draw energy from everywhere that they can and if you're an empath you're a very good plug 
for them to plug in and draw energy from you. And so as an empath, when somebody does draw energy from you like that, it leaves you feeling very tired, drained, shaky, weak, nauseated. So that is a very good reason for empaths to practice keeping their energy high and practice energetic protection because you are a beacon of someone to plug into your energy field and just pull it from you. Which leads me to the next subject I want to get into as far as empath stuff, which is empathic health. Um, so we've already discussed about the psychic senses and why, why you might be an empath anyways, because you have these abilities you were born with, right? Um, we've discussed some of the indicators of how can you tell if you're an empath. And by the way, if you really, if you want to take an empath quiz, I actually have put together this really cool empath quiz. You can email me or Lydia, Jennifer at keystothespiritworld.com or Lydia, L-Y-D-I-A at keystothespiritworld.com and ask for the empath quiz link and we will send it to you and you can take the empath quiz just if you're not if you're not sure of if you're an empath or not we'll go ahead and send you the link um, I should have probably posted it on the show page but I didn't so why we went over if you're an empath why you might be an empath but why do you care why should you even care if you're an empath um, because most most empaths don't feel well they don't feel their best and they spend a lot of time trying to figure out why they feel a certain way. What is happening? Why do I feel like this? What, why do I not feel like, well, why do I feel this way? What, what's wrong with me? So they can't quite put their finger on it, but they know that they don't feel optimal. And this is why I was talking about, since you're an energy reader, this is why I was talking about protection as far as energy is concerned. Since you're an energy reader, you're basically picking up signals from everywhere all day long. But you're not just picking up signals from everywhere. You're also many people in places, people more so, that you come into contact with potentially is pulling energy from you because you're an energetic beacon. Um, and past tend to be, um, like I said, more prominent in that way. And so as you're picking up signals from everywhere, as energy is being pulled from you, many times it results in having energy fatigue or low energy. And that's where the problems come in. Um, low energy and energy fatigue for the spiritual body is like having a low immune system for the physical body. And so it causes you not to feel well in the spiritual body. And your spiritual health will dictate your physical health. It will. It, it, your spiritual body and your physical body's health will mirror each other. So that's kind of cool in a sense that actually people have a good indication of what's going to happen with their physical health if they pay really close attention to their spiritual health. If they don't pay enough attention, they continue to ignore things that are going on in their spiritual body, the body will then go, okay, you won't ignore this then, and we're going to create a physical issue. So... That's kind of how that happens. Your, your physical health will mirror your spiritual health. And having low energy and low fatigue or energy fatigue for the spiritual body, like I said, it's like having a low immune system. So you want to learn to keep that high. It's you want to learn how to keep your energy field strong and um, good in order to have good spiritual health, because that in turn affects your physical health. And so that's why you would want to find out if you're an empath, because there are things that you can absolutely do uh, to live a very healthy life as an empath. Um, and there are four little known empath signs that I wanted to tell you guys about as well. It's, so I went over the common signs, but here's some other um, little known empath signs that people don't talk about. People who have anxiety or panic attacks most of the time are an empath. Um, they, it is very common, but little known but very common for an empath to have anxiety or panic attacks. Very, very common. It is also common uh, for them to be diagnosed with ADHD or ADD, whatever you want to call it. Um, hypochondriacs, super common 
to be an empath. That's a it's a it's a high probability that they're that they're an empath if they're uh, a hypochondriac. And people who overeat, that is also a high probability that you're an empath. Um, the reason for that is because, like I was mentioning before, um, when you're energy reading everything, you can start to have anxiety type feelings because you're overwhelmed with all the energy that you're reading. Um, with the hypochondriac and the overeating, of course, um, empaths are always trying to figure out what's wrong with them because there's, there's not something necessarily physically wrong with them, but they don't feel right. So they're always trying to figure out, okay, why am I not feeling good? What is happening? And so they're constantly thinking, well, I must have this. Well, I must have this. Well, I read about this and this has got to be it. Um, the overeating, uh, eating is grounding. And we're going to get into that in a minute because we're going to talk about the five steps that will, five simple steps, actually pretty simple, that will help you live a healthier life as an empath. Um, when you when you eat, you ground yourself. And that's, like I said, something we're gonna be talking about. And so that actually tends to make empaths feel better. It, has, it starts to make them feel stronger again, um, energetically. And so because of that calming energetic feeling, uh, they tend to eat more than they should because any time that they don't, that they're experiencing any of these empath issues, um, they tend to go to food because they know as soon as they eat that that will calm their system or they'll, they'll start feeling better. So that will lead us into our first of the five simple steps to help you live a healthier life as an empath. And that step number one is learn and practice grounding techniques. Um, and we will talk about that soon, as soon as we come back from the break. Well, I'm going to give you some grounding techniques and we're going to talk about why, what grounding really does. Why does it work for you? We'll be back soon. For conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance, Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Listen, my life changed because someone was there to get me to use drugs. No one can understand. People think that having someone who will listen makes it better. I need help. I'm listening. I need help. I think that having someone who will listen makes it better. People understand. No one can get me to use drugs. My life changed because someone was there to listen. Go to heretolisten.com for tips and tools to turn addiction around. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Okay, we're back and we're talking about the five simple steps of living a healthier, happier life as an empath. So we just got into step one, which is learn and practice grounding techniques. What is grounding techniques? Um, the It is actually releasing excess energy from your spiritual body and also recharging it at the same time. So when you're out as an empath, uh, picking up all this you know, all these signals and energy things from different places. We already talked about how it can be pulled from you and drained from you um, energy. You can also pick up excess energy and junk um, when you're out in public or you're out just doing things. 
So you can pick up excess energy that doesn't belong to you and people can also drain energy from your battery. It can happen at the same time, it can happen in different ways, but grounding will help both. Um, it will do two things. It will actually help to release the excess energy away from your body. So imagine it as if you come in from like rolling around in mud and you need to take a shower because you have all this you know, mud on you. You need to take a shower. It's the same type of thing. It'll just run off you into the ground, into Mother Earth, and it will absorb that excess energy. And during grounding meditations or um, grounding techniques, and I actually go through a lot of those. I, I have another podcast or I think a YouTube um, for those of you wanting to see some more grounding techniques, you want to check out my YouTube channel. And I think that the, I have a thing on there that ha gets into a lot of grounding techniques. Um, you will then recharge. There's a, there's some techniques that you can do to recharge your energetic field. So the step one would be to learn and practice grounding techniques. Super, super, super important as an empath. Um, Step two is to realize the effects of negativity and negative people and how, how they, basically how they affect you as an empath. Realize the effects that they have on you as an empath. Um, this is a huge one that gets overlooked often. So when people pull energy from you, we call those energy vampires. And that is something to be very aware of because energy vampires tend to usually have a, a lower vibration and they will constantly need to recharge from you. The reason that that's important is because it's not usually like you're running into an energy vampire at Safeway and it's going to be the checkout lady. Energy vampires most likely are friends or family if they're in your life. Um, and it's not that you need to get rid of them, but you need to learn techniques of dealing with them and how it affects your own health and how, how, you, how you feel. Um, and actually, I wrote a book called Energy Vampires um, just for this purpose. If any of you are interested, you definitely want to check that out on Amazon. I think it's like $3.99 or something. Um, and I have tons of uh, ways to deal with setting boundaries and different things, why it affects you, how it affects you. And actually, I believe there's grounding techniques in there as well. Um, the news, that's another thing that really affects people um, as far as the negativity um, and how negative things affect your life. Um, negativity lowers your vibration. And when negativity lowers your vibration, again, it will cause an empath not to feel well. The key as an empath is to learn how to protect and keep your vibration high, how to protect the energy that you have, how to keep bubble that in and keep it strong. And so it's very important for you to realize the effects of negativity in your on your life and with people around you and how that affects your how you feel um, step three is understand and accept that you're different this is something that I think that empaths have a really hard time with they tend to think that they can still do the same thing everybody else does yeah but you know my friends doing this and my family's doing this and I should be able to do that because they view themselves as just they're friends and everybody's human and they're human, so why can't they do all these human things? Um, because you're also a spiritual being. And as, as an empath, when you're a spiritual um, being as well as human, you have different ways that you have to do different things. You, you cannot just be like everybody else and you know go to Walmart and go to a concert and go hang out with your negative friends and just feel great. Uh, it doesn't work like that. People who are not empaths, absolutely can do a lot more things such as that without the physical and spiritual um, repercussions of not feeling well. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. So you may hang out with other people who feel fine when they do that stuff, and then you find that you're feeling not so fine. Um, so you need to understand and accept that you're different and you're not going to be able to just continue to do the same things other people do all the time. Uh, Step number four, you want to become hyper aware of your environment, including low vibration conductors. Um, that would be what we talked about, like the negative people, the news media, entertainment, which contains violence. That's important. Um, low vibration situations. 
um, where people may be arguing or you know they're they're having a hard time with this or that or they're always struggling or situations that may not be even involving you but it feels very low vibration a lot of fighting arguing whatever or even a work situation if the work environment is not healthy um, you want to be hyper aware of your environment um, step number five, you want to become more in tune with your spiritual body and your psychic senses. And you want to learn how to align your spiritual and physical bodies. Um, and that's really important. You can do this by reading things, um, but also I do offer a class um, on this, which we talked about earlier. And that is my psychic, it's on psychicabilityclass.com. I open it a few times a year. I definitely cover a lot of this stuff. I also have another class um, that is my empath transformation class. But if you get on any of my newsletters, um, you will. I only am opening that once a year right now. And it's actually 52 weeks of uh, shifting and changes and challenges for you. So you get to go through the whole um, every two weeks you will get something in your inbox that will be a new challenge and a new thing for you to learn about yourself as an empath. So the other thing I wanted to cover before, um, you know, we get to the end of the show too, is I, if you enjoyed today's show, definitely go check out some of my other, um, radio shows, my other podcasts that I do. I bet, like I said, I have over a hundred and some shows. I, uh, some of those are on YouTube, but if you Google me on iTunes, spirit chat, you will have access to those. But I have a spirit community. If you're interested in uh, learning more about your spiritual self and, and have questions about spirit communication or, you know, being an empath or dreams or astral travel, we discuss so many things on this um, Facebook group at My Higher Purpose Learning is what it's called. And it's my spirit community. And there was a few thousand people in there. We're always having active discussions. And it's a safe place for you to ask questions like, um, people will say, I had this weird dream last night or, um, this weird thing happened at my house and I hear, I, or I heard this or I seen this and they post pictures and you can find that by going to my keys to the spirit world.com and up at the top, there's a button that says spirit community or a tab and you click on that. You request to join because it is a private group. So once you request to join, you'll get, um, accepted in and then there's lots of cool info on there i do a lot i do classes um and i do um getting ready to do some mentorship stuff but i also do a lot of stuff for free i really try to give you guys a lot of stuff so um we're gonna go over a few fun facts before we end the show today most people who are empaths do not know that they are empaths um that I find interesting. They really don't know. They just think that they're regular people and they just think that they might not feel well. Um, many empaths are drawn or are already in the field of healing. So if you're drawn to the field of healing or you're in the field of healing, um, doctors, nurses, chiropractors, psychologists, massage therapists, etc. Um, it doesn't matter if it's traditional or non-traditional medicine. Uh, that many empaths are drawn in. That's why the, your doctors a lot of times are in tune um, with what's going on with you. Uh, natural foods have a profound effect on empaths because of the energetic properties you're consuming. Um, a lot of people don't know that. Um, foods that are not boxed or processed, like natural foods, uh, fruits, vegetables, even meat, organic meat of that nature, um, if you consume them in their natural state, you're consuming a high energy product. And that really has a profound effect on impasse. And I find that kind of interesting that people don't um, notice that. But um, if you're eating a lot of processed foods, you're not consuming energy. Um, and as we know, you're an energy reader, so it's very important. Um, many times impasse respond better to alternative medicine, which some people um, find interesting, such as natural remedies, herbs, or things such as acupuncture, massage therapy, and that sort of thing. I don't recommend necessarily doing one versus the other. In my family, we do both. If someone's not feeling well or has an injury or whatever, um, you do both. We do both. You do alternative medicine, natural remedies, and you couple that with um, 
traditional medicine because you want to, you know, might as well hit things at both ends. Um, many empaths have a hard time watching movies with violence. Uh, the, I have a really hard time watching movies with violence. And a lot of people will be like, what do you mean? It's not even real. It doesn't matter because the actors actually portray that character. And when they're portraying the character and they're really into the character, it still um, energetically comes out in the same manner as if it's a real thing. And so it feels very uncomfortable uh, to watch movies with violence if you're an empath. Um, many empaths can read pets. They can communicate with them and know what they need. And it's funny because they don't realize that they're communicating with them, but they actually, um, a lot of people who have pets that they're very in tune with and they, they were like, they almost feel like they have conversations with them or you even notice that, wow, they kind of almost seem like little people, those pets with, the, with their owners. Um, they have empathic connections um, with that, but they also may not have it just with their pet. They may have it with any pets. So hopefully uh, this was helpful for you. I enjoyed it and I would love to see you back on next Wednesday. Don't forget to join my spirit community. Um, go to Keys to the Spirit World. Email us if you'd like to take the um, empath quiz and don't forget to check out my psychic ability class if you're interested in learning more. So until next time, aloha.